Hello everyone, it's good to see you all back. Have you ever wanted to feel OP in Destiny 2? Like, think about it. Hunters have Star Eaters, which vastly increase their damage by tenfold, while Titans have Symphoseps, which when paired with 1-2 punch shotgun, can kill most bosses in minutes. Warlocks don't have that level of OP, until now of course. Yes, I'm talking about this bit of Apotheos and Star Eaters class bond that today I will be showing off for everyone to enjoy. And of course, free to play players, I will be showing alternatives to use throughout the video. So before we start, what is your favourite OP build to use in game? Be sure to comment below. Starting with the general aim and the result of the build, our aim is to make sure our prismatic transcendence form is available via the high usage of Battle of Grace, which will all lead back into our super for the ultimate high damage super being pulled off. For this, we will be using Outbreak Perfected and Solipsium with his custom role of Spear of Apotheos and Star Eater. Starting with Solipsium with his 2 exotic effect, it states, A Spear of Apotheos, a temporary gain increased milling and grenade regen after your super ends. Spear of Star Eaters, while your super energy is full, picking up an aura power overcharges your super, granting bonus damage. This role is one of the most sought after roles that many players are willing to farm the death for, with of course good reasons. The following is basically allowing your super to not only do insanely high damage compared to anyone else in the room, but the ability buff afterwards allows you to stack that damage even further to the point of easily soloing anything that you face. It's a must have for the hardcore endgame players, but free to play players I wouldn't worry so much since having someone like Apotheos Veil on his own is also viable enough even without the damage buff included. For example, if you have a Apotheos Veil, with say, Strand or Void, these are the best classes for the exotic alone, if you wish to maximize your damage with what you currently got. Our second exotic is the Outbreak Perfected with the exotic effect, the Corruption Spreads, which states, This weapon creates Seether Nanite Swarms on rapid hits and precision kills. Easily one of the best exotic pulse rifles to use this season. Its simple yet powerful design allows players to overwhelm their targets through sheer amounts of Nanites being applied. It's actually pretty good to use as a DPS option against most bosses you face, but this works perfectly for a build like this which is all about raw power. Free to play players, if you want something similar, then the Fawn is good for applied dot damage it does over time. If that's not good, then the Limonarch bow is also a great choice to pick for as fast dot damage, but overall if you can get the choice of getting the outbreak perfected as soon as possible, I would stick to that. For aspects and fragments we have the following. Feed the Void where defeating targets with any ability killed will activate Devour. Helion, where adamant your class ability will produce a solar mortar that will lob flaming projectiles at distant targets and scorch them. Fast or Grace, where defeating targets with connect weapons grants you bonus transcendence energy. Using your super will grant you and allies bonus transcendence energy. Fast or Solitude, where landing rapid precision hits emit a seven blast from the target. Fast of Hope, where having an elemental buff will regenerate your class ability faster. Faster balance, where rapidly defeating light targets grants melee energy. Rapidly defeating dark targets grants grenade energy. And faster dominance, where your void grenades weaken targets, where your arc grenades jolts them. As a note, using Nova Bomb and Vortex grenades are the best combo to go with for maximizing damage all over. Nova Bomb, I believe, has the highest super damage in game without the buff included. So once that's applied, it becomes even more OP. Vortex with weakened effect is plain simple and helpful for applying as much damage as we can against bosses, which in most cases can help with getting the health down up to about half in most GM encounters. Everything else within the fragments is designed to support the build further by providing steady and escalating increasement of damage to the user. Things such as Facet of Grace and Solitude will support our kinetic weapon strength as we play on. A Facet of Hope and Balance will focus on improving cooldown times for our abilities, and a Facet of Dominance is the outlier for being helpful in everything our kit needs. Such a simple kit is all you need if you ever do use Prismatic to its fullest and best form. For the modern stats, we have both Resilience and Discipline marked as a top priority, with Strength also playing a part. Resilience, we have ours at tier 10 for a 30% damage reduction. No key mods are needed for this area, as having Devour will be enough. Discipline, we have ours at tier 10 for a 1 minute 16 cooldown via Vortex Grenades. 
Vortex is ideal for the damage boost it provides for the overall kit, so it's best within your own interest to keep the grenade type and fragments to help further your build. One of the positives to such a build is how easy it is to then fill in the rest with whatever you have in mind. So having Impact Induction times 1 for a 12% grenade buff, Momentum Transfer times 2 for a 17% mini buff, Invigoration times 1 for a 10% game buff, Outreach for a 12% melee buff, and Distribution for a 4% all ability buff will be suitable for the build. The additional mods we have are the following. Connect Siphon for creating orbs of power via Connect Weapons. Charged up times 1 for a plus 1 in armor stacks we carry. Connect Weapon Surge times 1 for a 10% Connect Weapon buff. Ashes to Assets for super energy via grenade kills. And Heavy Finder, Reserves and Scavenger ammo mods are highly recommended for the weapons we are using. As we have covered our subject primary weapon, I would then advise you to pick up some other super weapons for the build. These are all optional but do hold some benefits towards the build. Secondary, we have the Apochal Integration Hand Cannon with Incandescent and Stats for All. The following is being used for stunning overloads and being handy towards the swap to if my weapons are out. This will change your endgame player to a more comfortable running of things. While free to play players, the following is a good gun to farm and have with how flexible and smooth it is. Heavy, we have the Apex Predator with Raw Pawn Reconstruction. The following is a powerful and reliable rocket launcher that many players will use for highest levels of DPS encounters they may come across. There are better of course and of course better roles and the positive of the build is that you don't need to use this if you don't have it since any weapon you're choosing also works. Now I am aware of how many players prefer to use exotics with their full perks instead of their class items in game. As they are easier to use, I don't require most players to do a limited exotic quest to get them. You might think players just need to get good, but not everyone has the time or patience to do so. Which is why, although this exotic pairing is really amazing to have on hand, it will take some time for players to get to grip with farming it to its fullest. One fully stacked up Star Eater's perk, combined with Nova Bomb, is enough to take out one third to one fifth of a GM's boss health if everything lands accordingly. Using this on Fallen Saber, I could easily deal with the bosses on my own as long as I don't lose the given enhanced buff, which is a common issue when using Star Eaters overall. At the same time, using my kinetic weapons and transcendent state is enough for me to carry my teammates who are not used to this level of aggression. It is quite interesting to see what a Star Eater Warlock would be like and the results shown are quite promising. Ultimately, the build will be more noticeable in raids and dungeons against bosses who you really want to farm or just simply speedrun through. The high damage survivability rate is enough for endgame players to pick this up and make this their new main loadout to use, while free to play players have something to farm for in mind. A great build that showcases the true power of Solipsium and its well defined combos. So there we have it, I hope you all enjoyed the build breakdown. If you have any thoughts on content shared then please leave a comment below, while if you enjoy the content and want more DT videos in the future then leave a like and a sub while you're here. Dim link for the build is located below in the pin section and I do advise you to check out my playlist for more. It was great sharing today's video with you all and I hope to see you again soon.